Hey, my name is Jimmy Fung and in this video, I'll be sharing with you the one secret that has allowed me to make code emails work. And when I say it makes, I made it work. What I mean by that is I was able to fill my calendar with five to six calls every single day for months on end. And there's a very one key secret that I was able to use that's able to leverage in order to do so. And it's not what you think. So the largest problem that I personally see in the space from people teaching cold emails or people teaching how to do outreach for their own agencies is they kind of sell the idea that here is the script, here's the winning script. And if you just plug and play this exact script, then you will see success. But that's the biggest lie in the industry because that's simply not true. I could literally share with you my exact cold email script and you could use it and you might get a ton of replies, but that does not necessarily mean that you will be able to make money with it. And the reason why is because when people buy something, they want to buy from someone else. They're not buying uh, from an automated robot or this and that. And the largest thing that people make is they just assume it's a plug and play formula, but there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes. So in this video, I'll be breaking down how you would go about adding personality to your outreach, why it's not just the scripts that mean success for cold emails or for your own outreach efforts for your own agency. And the number one, we, one, number one way we go about doing that is by leveraging a video sales letter. So pretty much the way it works is because we're reaching out to these people, we are adding value upfront. So most people, the way to teach cold emails is at the end of that very first email, they're kind of pitching for a call. Hey, do you have time for a free chat on Thursday? Hey, do you have 30 minutes on Friday? Right. And while that works, while that worked a couple of years ago, when less people were sending cold emails, it's definitely not the most effective strategy today based on our own, based on our own data. After I've sent over a million plus emails, I realized a strategy that just kind of just works. And if you implement this the right way, if you watch this video and you implement everything that I share with you, then your results will literally double or triple in the next two to three weeks. Right? So the main idea behind this is, when we're offering value upfront, people reply back and we record some form of content. It's called a video sales letter because it's an educational piece of content. But the main goal of that is to drive a sale, to put them onto a calendar, something along those lines. And when we create these video sales letters, that's something that other people cannot copy. I could copy your scripts, you could copy my scripts, everyone else in someone else's course can use the exact same script. But what they cannot copy is your personalized video sales letter, which does a lot of the heavy lifting. And once I figured this out, I was able to fill up my entire calendar and I was able to go from zero to $10,000 a month in 22 days. So if you like what I'm sharing with you, if you find it valuable, please drop me a follow on Instagram, go through all of my past content. I share a lot more business insights, insights about cold emails, why it works, why it doesn't, how to build a successful business. And I share personal insights from my own business, from my own life that has allowed me to see success in that realm. Um, if you also find this video valuable, please make sure you drop a like, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and down below in the description section, I put my calendar link. So if you want to chat, if you want to see how you can build your own agency, build your own lead generation agency and go from zero to $10,000 a month in the next 90 days by working directly with me, then book a, book a time and you know, let's chat, right? Because some people, I just can't really help. Uh, this call is not going to be a hard sales call. I don't like to pitch people like that. Uh, I find it very exhausting when I'm doing it multiple times a day. So on that call, it will simply be a, a regular conversation between you and I just to see if I could even help you get to your goals in your own business, right? But if you find this vi video valuable, um, again, please make sure you drop a subscribe, check out my Instagram, and hope you find it valuable. Thank you. In this video, I'll be breaking down the secret behind booking hundreds of sales calls a month using cold emails. And by the way, it's not what you think. Let me explain. So what everyone thinks that cold email success comes down to is the specific thing that you're saying, right? People think it might be sending tons of emails or sending per, you know, very well crafted, personalized emails, or even the specific words that you're using. And while all of these things, they are super important due to it being, you know, kind of at the top of the funnel as a form of direct response marketing, right? We're reaching out to people is the first thing that they will see, the first thing that they will read. And while these things are important, theoretically, someone can copy your exact email scripts. They could copy my exact code email scripts. They could take your lead list because let's be real here. It's not really that hard to build a lead list and anybody can do this. And if you really think about it, 
what separates someone who is, you know, person A, who's making tens of thousands of dollars a month inside of the business versus someone else who is just struggling with booking, you know, calls. Now, obviously, the cold email, like the frameworks, stuff like that, that is important because if you're just saying really poorly crafted, sending really poorly crafted emails, then obviously it's not going to work. But that's kind of the reason why I give away all my cold emails because I understand that at the end of the day, the specific thing that you're saying is only at the top of the funnel. It's probably like the top 30%. But when people buy from you, they want to buy from a real person. And there's a way that we do that, right? And um, as part of the marketing to put more marketing terms behind it is what I call the mark middle of funnel, basically, right? Uh, that's kind of where you nurture the prospects and that's where and how you take someone who's interested, giving you an interest to reply, who's interested in what you're selling and turning them into a booked sales call and an extension of that, turning them into cash inside of your bank account. So basically this is what this process is what will create interest for your offer it will create trust it will create rapport and it will help you to pre-sell your prospects by warming them up so the secret is by leveraging a video sales letter so vsl for short for your offer and this is really the difference between collecting cash quickly in your business or struggling and feeling like you're scraping for pieces with your business and this is personally what allowed me to go from zero to $10,000 a month in my lead generation agency in 22 days. And what has allowed me to collect $150,000 in cash in the first seven months of the year. Because once I implemented this, um, it became so much easier to number one, get them onto a sales call. And number two, when they are on the sales call, they already know who I am. They already trust me to a degree and they already have a very strong idea of what my offer is and how I can help them, right? So once I figured this out, it completely changed the game for me. So in this video, what we'll be covering is four things. The first one is when to use a video sales letter. The second thing is how this actually works. The third one is the benefits of using a VSL. And the final thing we'll be covering is the VSL template that uh, that you can then take and craft your video sales letter in a similar fashion. So jumping into it, when would you use a VSL? When would you use a video sales letter, right? So the answer is pretty much always. So anytime you're reaching out to people, you're selling a product, a service, a video sales letter will work. So I have clients who are agencies selling some form of service, a service-based business, and the video sales letter cooks for them. I have worked with coaches who implemented a video sales letter and this has worked for them. I have also worked with software companies selling a specific product, so not a service or not information, and it still worked for them. Because if you do this the right way, it will work. So the way you would put this or the way or where you would host the video sales letter is there are really two platforms where you would put this on. The first one is your YouTube, so a more public social media platform. You'll put that on YouTube, you'll upload it as a video and you put it there. And the second thing is you would put that on your landing page. So if you have a website, if you have a landing page, if you're creating a card, click funnels, go high level, whatever that is, you would still be able to put a video sales letter onto that landing page, right? So pretty much wherever you are interacting with cold traffic and you will redirect them to that landing page or that website. Uh, or for me personally, I redirect my cold traffic to my YouTube channel. So this also works really well when you're running any form of outbound prospecting campaigns. So not necessarily just cold emails, right? If you are doing social media DMs, you're DMing people to book meetings on, let's say Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, this will work. If you're running an ad, this will work as well. I think VSLs are more prominent for people running ads, uh, but people don't realize that that same framework still applies for cold outbound exactly the same. It's just the method to get the people through the door is different. So rather than running a paid ad to get people to opt into your video sales letter, now you are cold emailing people, asking them if they're interested and if they'll be interested in seeing it. So that's the difference. So in terms of how it works, it's really quite simple. Uh, I broke this down in a flowchart to give you a better understanding of how the video sales letter will work within your cold email outbound. So obviously at the top, we have cold emails. You're emailing these people cold, cold leads and you're pitching your thing. You're pitching your service. Your cold email will have a value CTA. So I have a video talking specifically about what a value CTA is. In summary, you're basically pitching your offer. And then at the CTA level, you're basically saying, Mind if I share with you a quick video explaining how this works? The prospect will then reply. They'll obviously be like, yep, I'm interested in seeing. Let's see how this works. 
And at that point, after they are interested, you would send them over to your lead magnet. So the value CTA is your lead magnet. You're asking if they're interested in checking out your lead magnet. Your lead magnet in this specific case is your video sales letter, right? Your video sales letter will be hosted on YouTube. So you would send them the link to your YouTube, or if you have it on your landing page, you can redirect them to your landing page as well. It doesn't really matter. After that, the prospect will go through your VSL. They probably, depending on how long your video sales letter is, generally speaking, they're between 10 minutes and 30 minutes long. The prospect probably wouldn't watch the whole thing, uh, but they might watch parts of it. So they don't even need to watch the whole thing for this to work, but the best prospects, the people who are easiest to sell to, the people who jump onto the Zoom calls that are already pre-sold, they have probably consumed 80% of your video sales letter. So once that's done, they'll book, they'll then book a time on your calendar, they'll reply back to you. They might say, sure, loved the video, thanks for this, let's set up a time to chat. They'll reply back to you, and at which point you would book them in to your calendar. So this is kind of how the video sales letter works. Uh, if you were running paid ads or if you're running social media outbound, uh, you would just substitute the cold email for the ad or for you know, the, the Facebook script, whatever, right? The DM script. And that's kind of how that would work. It would work in the basically the exact same way. So if you have doubts about how this works, uh, if you're saying, you know, if you're saying you don't want to create a video sales letter because that sounds like a ton of work, uh, you don't know how to do it. Uh, or since I'm telling you to record a video of yourself talking about the prospect and you might say to yourself, oh, I don't have a nice camera or I don't have a mic. Trust me, my first video sales letter was basically complete garbage, right? Um, in terms of production quality, not the actual stuff that I was saying. But basically I filmed it on my laptop webcam with my built-in microphone and I had zero editing. So you can look at it here. Uh, it's actually on my YouTube channel as well, but let me just play it a little bit, right? Um, as you can see, right, like this entire video, uh, I have no editing. You literally see all my bookmarks, you see my taskbar on my computer. Uh, I'm just recording my screen on a Google Docs and I'm explaining the process with a little bit of a circle with me in the, in the corner, right? So this process worked because I implemented this for my own business and believe it or not, it actually cooked. It got me a ton of views in terms of the video sales letter, but we're obviously not going for views. If we're uploading on YouTube, that's not our goal. Our goal is to get people to actually watch these videos. Uh, and I booked a ton of meetings and this was kind of how I did it. And most people don't really understand this because you could copy my cold emails, but if you're missing this part and you're not able to do it yourself well at a good level, then you're still not gonna book meetings and it's not even about what you're specifically saying in the cold email. So even though I was terrible at this, I ran with this VSL until I made $23,000 in February, right? I talk about the benefits in this video. I talk about the benefits of my lead generation services because I'm selling lead generation services for my agency. I talk about cold emails, how it works, the specific process. So over here in this, you know, I just opened up this, my, my VSL a little, VSL. You see a flow chart talking specifically about how the cold emails work and how that looks like in specific detail. And then, Back to my point about the cold emails, in my actual email that I used to reach out to people, my CEO was, mind if I share a quick video showing you how this works? They say yes, and I share with them this, right? So once people said yes, I sent them over the link to the YouTube, and this VSL cooked. I printed meetings left and right, and I was able to sign a bunch of clients from my own lead generation agency, and my calendar in February, so I just opened this up. Um, <laughs> let me just open this up in a new tab. Right, so this was in January, 2023. All of these aqua ones are, you know, sales calls, right? So January, Fe uh, last week of January, first week of February, 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 right? So this absolutely cooked, as you can see, I booked hundreds of meetings basically, right? I don't even know how many meetings I was booking a week, but I did it all explicitly from this video sales letter. So if you like making money, then I highly suggest you implement a video sales letter into your outreach process. So moving on to the benefits of using a VSL, uh, I hope you're starting to understand and see the benefits of it. But basically the benefits of it is number one, you can sell your service without actually talking to people live one-on-one -on -one because you're creating an evergreen asset that you could then leverage. And in theory, you could send this VSL to thousands of people and they'll still understand what you're saying. So you don't have to do this on a one-on-one -on -one personalized basis. I know people send personalized looms, but that's simply very unscalable, sending personalized looms and stuff like that. It works when you're only reaching out to 10 people because you can easily create 10 personalized looms, but it doesn't work that well when you're reaching out to thousands of people and want thousands of people to watch it. 
if you have a great video sales center, pretty much everything else can be terrible within your funnel and it'll still convert like a champ. Now, obviously, uh, you still have to be smart about what you're saying in your cold email. You should still have certain things in place to make yourself look presentable, make yourself look professional because you are running a business. But my point being is the VSL will do a lot of the heavy lifting, right? You will be able to warm up your prospects before the call and it will significantly shorten the sales cycle length because now they trust you and they understand how your process works. You'll be able to also qualify your leads since leads are educated before they book in a call. So if I email someone and they're not interested in booking more calls for their own business, they'll watch that video sales letter and within 30 seconds, they'll know it's not for them. So that automatically disqualifies the people who aren't interested. And if you pair up this strategy uh, with another strategy that puts thousands of eyeballs on your VSL, then you will make it rain. So that other strategy that will put thousands of eyeballs on your VSL, in this case, is cold emails and kill cold emails. You're emailing and reaching out to thousands of people every single day, uh, and that by itself is the mechanism that would drive attention towards your video sales letter. Your video sales letter will then convert those people, warm them up, and do a little bit of pre-selling. So that's kind of what that looks like and how that kind of works. So where did this theory come from? So I obviously did not invent the video sales letter uh, strategy. Um, I, you know, nowhere close to that. It's been around for many, many years, especially in the realm of internet marketing. So these are just some of the people that I learned this theory from. So the first one is Russell Brunson, the founder of ClickFunnels. Uh, ClickFunnels is a really popular software, popular platform to build a funnel. A lot of people use it. If you've ever been through a coaching program or through a coaching funnel, most coaches and course sellers, they actually use ClickFunnels. Uh, I learned this from Dan Kennedy. He wrote a book called The Ultimate Sales Letters. He's one of the, he's one of the goats of, of crafting sales letters and stuff like this. That's his book. It's really great. I recommend you give it a read if you have the time. I learned this from a book called Breakthrough Advertising, one of the staples inside the advertising community. If you ever want to run ads or do any form of advertising, you probably should read that book as well. And then I also learned this from David Ogilvy, right? So if you don't know who he is, you could probably search him up on Google. He is the grandfather of advertising, talking about how to run ads. He's worked with many of the biggest companies today, and this was like 100 years ago, right? So. Um, He's one of the goats, one of the grandfathers of advertising, and this is kind of where this theory came from. So in terms of producing your VSL, what do you actually need in terms of tools, softwares, and stuff like that in order to make this work? Just keep in mind, if you're ever stressed about this or overthinking it, that my own video sales letter that was filmed using a software called Loom and Google Docs, basically. So what I'm saying is you don't really need too much. I would recommend you use Google Slides or a PowerPoint if you want a presentation format. If you don't, you could use Google Docs. You would probably require some form of mic. So if that's your laptop mic, then use that. If that's the best thing you have, then use that. If you have the resources, I strongly suggest you reinvest into a decent mic. You could probably get one on Amazon for like 50 bucks to $100. You would need Loom, so the software to record your screen. I'm actually using Loom right now to record my own screen. Uh, and then you would also preferably use Loom to capture your face to build additional credibility, right? Loom has a... Uh, um, a feature that allows you to capture your face, which is why you saw my face at the bottom of that VSL. And I would strongly recommend you do that because it ties a face to your name and what you do. So in terms of the actual video sales letter template, right? This is the good part. This is probably what you'll learn most from this video, but I hope you understand the theory behind it, how it works and why you need one inside of your own, your own business. So in terms of the video sales letter templates, uh, obviously all of these things, you would have to go and apply it back into your own offer, into what you're selling and into your own business. But basically how it would work is the first thing right at the top, the title is you would say how to get from state one to state two and time frame using mechanism without their biggest pain point or without their biggest fear. You would obviously change this. This is the headline. Another really good one I like to use is so for, for example, my own video sales letter that I used earlier in this video was how to make it unreasonable for recruitment agencies to sign three to five clients a month by leveraging cold outbound systems within 90 days, right? without using paid ads or relying on word of mouth, something like that. Um, and that is my headline. I would strongly recommend you fill in this template, right? And the core concept behind this template, behind this headline is you need to get them to believe, to believe in your mechanism to buy your products, right? 
they have to believe that by working with you, you're the only company that can help them to get to their desired results. So if you're selling lead generation services, you need to get the viewer to believe that you're the only one who can help them get three to five clients a month for their own businesses, right? So what are the three to five things that your prospect needs to believe to be true in order for them to buy your product from you, right? They process, the process is complicated and few people can get it right. And they need to think to themselves that they need to bring in an expert because they obviously cannot do it themselves. So that is how, the overall vibe, the overall message that you have to convey inside your video sales letter. You're basically telling them that this is what I do. This is how I do it. You could do this yourself, but it's going to require a ton of your time. You're going to dump a ton of money. So why not work with me instead? That's the overall message behind the video sales letter. Uh, after that, you would put a case study if you have case studies. Uh, that's very effective here because case studies is the best way to build credibility and to build trust with you know, with the leads, especially the cold leads. If you don't have case studies, I would just strongly recommend you break down your offer in great detail, explaining how every piece works. If you're selling cold emails as a service for lead gen, you might want to break down how you would set up the domains and email accounts and why that's important, why you have to warm up your emails. You break down the specific scripts, why they work. You break down the inbox management, how, how to take care of people asking questions, stuff like that and the expected end result. So that's what you do if you don't have a case study. If you do have a case study, uh, it's very important that you're able to highlight the transformation that, that, that you were able to take your client through. So what they were doing before they worked with you, what they're doing after they worked with you, right? The, the, the result that they got in basically. And again, if you have no case studies, just highlight the process at a high level and explain why it works and the expected end result. After that, you also want to put more proof in terms of transformations. So this ties back into case studies. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is just how you would present your actual case study. So obviously it puts their before state, state one, state two, if they're multiple before states, the pain they were going through, the time frame that they started working with you, how soon or how long it took them to get results using your company. You probably put some form of proof. So whether that's screenshots or videos, whatever that is, you might want to use a quote of them saying, you know, let's say they say, oh yeah, working with Jimmy was the best thing I've ever done in my business. Then you will put that as a quote. You can put logos and images to add additional credibility, but that's what that looks like. After the case study aspect, you would, this is the part that would disqualify the people inside of your funnel that are not meant to be there basically. So the way we do this is by calling out inside the video sales center, who is this process for? Who, you know, I sell lead generation. Who is this for? Who do I work with? So you would call out the audience and relate it to a painful problem. Um, you could encourage your audience. You could say something like, uh, if you're a recruitment agency owner, because I work with recruitment agencies, if you're a recruitment agency owner, you want to sign three to five clients in a down economy right now without relying on re referrals or word of mouth, right? That's a pain problem, pain point that they're currently having because right now the economy is not the best. It's not how it was in terms of recruitment like it was a year ago. You want to acknowledge the desires. You want to state the compliment attributes. You want to allay any of the current fears. So the pain points, what they're scared of. Recruitment agency owners are scared of not having deals. So you want to bring that out to the forefront. You justify the failures. So basically you would say, it's not your fault that the economy is bad. It's not your fault that the economy is taking a dump. But what you can do is control, take the variables you can control and get more meetings. You confirm the suspicion. So some people in the recruitment agency niche, maybe they don't understand that certain industries are laying off people or in hiring freeze. So you would confirm that, um, that suspicion by basically saying, if you're a recruitment agency owner and you had a lot of, a lot of deals last year, but now that deal pipeline tried up, it's because of the economy, right? You just want to bring it out to the forefront and then you would throw rocks at the enemies, right? So in this case, the market forces. Right? You would say very specific things. You would be creative and say very specific things and stories to basically say, you're basically telling these people it's not their fault that they're struggling. It's just not, right? It's factors outside their control. And that's basically what you want to be doing in your video sales letter when you call out who is this for. But it's very important that you specifically call out, I work with recruitment agency owners to get this result. I work with marketing agency owners to get this result. I work with software companies to get X, Y, and Z result. And it's very important that you do that. The next part of the VSL is your core concept, right? So make sure that you remove the responsibility and you place it on something that they can't control. So what I mean by this is for recruitment agency owners, 
I always bring up this example of the economy inside this video because that probably is the largest pain point because it's a business that demand relies heavily on the state of the economy and the economy obviously moves in cycles. So you have to just make it very clear that it's not their fault, that the economy is like, it's not their fault that they're struggling right now, but you do have the solution, right? You could you say something like, it's not your fault, you're not getting meetings, it's because of X, Y, and Z, it's because of the state of the economy. The truth is, and then you would then get into your mechanism, right? You would then introduce the core concept, the main idea of how you help them, the one thing they must believe to start working with you, right? So for example, for me, my core concept is even despite the state of the economy, by leveraging outbound, you will still be able to fill up your sales pipeline. So that's the first thing that they have to believe in order to start working with me. So for example, I have two examples here, right? So a SaaS company, so a belief that I might have to put into my VSL is that if you're a software company, you need cold emails to scale, but no one knows how to do it. No one teaches this stuff. No one teaches cold emails. You know, as SaaS founders, they're not professional marketers and they're not professional salespeople. So that's the first belief that they need in order to start working with you. Um, another example is let's say we're working with you know, cold storage companies, right? Cold storage companies might need to use X, Y, and Z, but the current infrastructure that they have right now cannot support that. Very few people understand this. So this is two examples of how I would personally go about doing this. After that, you would obviously want to establish credibility. You'd say, um, depending on how you want to say it, I personally would say something like, uh, but before we get too far into it, this is who I am. I'm Jimmy Fung. I'm the founder of X, Y, and Z, right? This is what I did in the past. Don't spend too much time on this. Make this a quick elevator pitch because at the end of the day, people don't really care that much about you. They care more about themselves, but you still want to do this to establish credibility because the last thing you want to do is run through this entire process and then they sit there and I'm like, oh, who's this guy? I don't know who this is. I don't even remember his name or what he looks like, right? So make sure you establish your credibility. Do this relatively quickly. Don't spend too much time on this. And then jumping right into the meat of the VSL is where you would leverage educational content. So basically, these are belief changers. So what you want to do here is you want to first introduce your educational step. So what is it that you do and how does it work? You want to back it up with some proof. So for example, if you're selling lead generation as a service, you can literally say if, for example, for me, right, like similar to how I did it earlier, I went inside my Google calendar and I said, look, using this process, I was able to book 20 meetings a week, as it will book 100 meetings a month, whatever that is, you want to back it up with proof and use a story to do so. You want to reiterate the steps. So throughout this VSL, you'll be using multiple educational steps because obviously your offer, depending on what that is, it really depends on what you're selling. But depending on your offer, more likely than not, there are multiple things that your prospect will have to learn and have to understand in order for it to work. Even for cold emails, right? It's not as simple as just writing cold emails. You need a VSL, right? You need to warm up your emails. Each of those three things I just mentioned are individual educational steps that you would highlight inside of your process, right? So make sure you list common questions that you put yourself in the shoes of someone who doesn't understand how this works. Come up with some questions about how it works. So for example, someone who's never sent cold emails or don't know anything about it, their most common question might be, are you sure cold emails work, right? And then you would answer that in the educational step by showing the calendar, yeah, it does work because using this same process, I booked myself 20 calls in a single week. So that's what you have to do. Uh, and using that specific example, that's personally what I did inside my own video sales letter. You can take a look. The video sales letter that I did create initially, the one I linked earlier in this video, if you actually watch it, it's actually pretty bad. So a lot of the stuff that I learned that I'm talking to you right now, I learned it with experience. But even my first video sales letter, it didn't necessarily follow this exact framework. It, you know, it followed the most important parts of it, but it skipped a lot of these steps because later on, as I went to revise it and even to create my current VSL, it incorporates all of these things, right? So I hope you understand and I hope you can see that it doesn't, this part doesn't have to be perfect for it to still work. It just has to be good enough. Right. And you have to, and part of what makes it good enough is by having educational steps, the thing, the value you're actually bringing of how it works and the process behind it. After that is educational step two, we just went over it. The second thing that they have to learn, right? Educational step number three, the third thing that they have to learn. And after that, you want to summarize the educational steps. So 
back to the point of cold emails. Let's say my three educational steps is number one, you have to set up all your email accounts correctly and warm them up the right way in order to make sure your emails land in the inbox. So deliverability, that's educational step one. Educational step two is you have to make sure the cold emails you're writing follows the frameworks. They don't lie, you don't use spam words, they're not too long, they're not too salesy. You have a good CTA. That's educational step two, writing the actual code emails. And the educational step three is you should leverage a VSL to convert people, to convert cold traffic, turn the interest into book meetings onto your calendar and so that they jump on the calls pre-sold on your offer. That's educational step three. And each of those three things, I would break them down at a high level. I obviously wouldn't go into great, great, great detail that takes 30 minutes to explain each of these three educational steps, but I would probably spend somewhere around five minutes on each of these educational steps to explain to your prospects how it works and why it's important. So that's how you would summarize the educational steps. You would just summarize after everything just to make sure people um, are on the same page and they don't get lost or aren't confused. And then after this, you would then move into kind of towards the end of the video sales center where, okay, now that you established that cold emails will help you, there's two ways we could go about this. Option one is the hard way. You could go and go on YouTube and learn all of this stuff yourself for free, but it might take you half a year to learn how cold email works. And I'll take you another two months and thousands of dollars of you just trying different things, launching cold email campaigns, and it will probably flop. So that's the hard way. Or option two, which is you could save yourself half a year and thousands of dollars from trying it yourself by working with us. We are experts in this field. We know what we're doing. We've done this hundreds of times, right? Maybe you haven't done it hundreds of times, but that is the way you want to present yourself, right? Like you don't want to use those words. You don't want to say you've done this hundreds of times if you haven't, but you have to say it with so much confidence that you know that it works. And by working with you, they're guaranteeing that result without wasting all their money, without spending months, if not years, going, doing this themselves and not getting any results. And then at this point, you would briefly explain your offer, but make sure you don't introduce features, right? Because people don't really care about features. They just care about how you can help them and the expected end result. And then after that, you say, again, this is for recruitment agencies. Again, this is for marketing agencies, just to make sure that you're qualifying them one more time, just in case, reiterate who this is for. And then you would list out, this is kind of optional. You don't necessarily have to put this, uh, but if you want to put this in, you could write a list of a high level summary of the quick and dirty benefits, right? So for example, for cold emails, a benefit is, you know, people don't care that you're sending cold emails. People want meetings. Why do people want meetings? Because they want to make more money from paid customers. So an example of a benefit is by working with us, you will fill your calendar. By working with us, you will add $5,000 of deals within the next two weeks to your company, et cetera, et cetera. That's a benefit. That's not a feature, right? I'm listing out the benefits and tying it to a tangible end result. And that's what you want to do. After this, you then want to list out your features, right? So the previous step, we talked about the benefits and the expected end result. Over here in features, I don't recommend you just spit out a list of 10 things that you would do for them. Just keep it simple, keep it high level, keep it short, you would say, and in order for us to fill up your calendar, this is what we'll do. We'll have to warm up your emails, we'll have to set them up correctly, craft your code emails, craft your offer, craft your VSL. Those are features, right? And then you can show screenshots of the process, whatever that is, uh, depending on how you want to present it. And then finally, we're moving into the offer and call to action. So after we've gone through that entire process, we now want to sum up your features and your offers. So again, once again, by working with us, we will build you a cold email system. We'll warm up everything. We'll craft the right offers, et cetera, et cetera, leading to book meetings. This is our offer. If you work with us, we will help you set all of these things up. We will work on a paid per performance or, or you don't pay something like that. That would be your offer that you would have to develop. You can include your price depending on what that is. If you're selling something really high ticket. So basically anything over 2k, I don't recommend you put a price, especially if you're driving them towards a sales cause. If you're selling a product, so software companies, for example, where you don't necessarily need sales cause, then you would put your price in here. Or if you're selling individual products, then you could probably put your price in here. You could put, you could include an option to book a call. Like I said, right? It depends on what you're specifically selling. If you're selling lead generation services or agency services as a whole, I just recommend you say, you just mention that you could book in a call with me. If you're interested, I wouldn't put pricing for any of those services. And you could, as an optional, you could introduce scarcity into your offer. 
So you could do that to 10x, dot, to amplify the message, but just keep in mind that don't use false scarcity. So don't say something like, we could only work with three people if you know for a fact that you can work with 10 people because people catch on really quickly. Also, don't use stuff like, oh yeah, our offer is $1,000, but if you sign up today, it'll be $300 because people have been through the ringer. They've been scammed a lot. They know bullshit when they see it. They know bullshit when they hear it. And if it's not legit, it will backfire on you. So if you have doubts, I wouldn't put scarcity, but if you generally only can work with three people, if you generally only can work with five people, if it's generally only on a discount, like a lot of people do Black Friday discounts, for example, or Boxing Day discounts on the offer, then you would say it here because that would be real. But if it's fake, I wouldn't manufacture it and I certainly wouldn't put it here as well if it's not necessary as part of your offer. And then after that, you could put a guarantee. If you don't have case studies, I would put a guarantee. Uh, if you do have case studies, I wouldn't necessarily put a guarantee. Uh, but if you do have a give, if you do have a guarantee, you would put it at this part of the VSL. And then finally, the final step of the VSL is you would then sum up your offer and the call to action. You would once again resummarize what you do, how it works, the features, the benefits, the expected end results, your guarantee, and your call to action will, depending on what that is, if you're selling an individual product without a sales call needed, you would say, head on over to this page and check, you know, enter your credit card or something like that and check, check out on the Stripe page, something like that. If you are driving it towards a sales call, you would say, I included a link to my calendar in the comments below, book a time to chat, something like that. Or specifically for cold emails, what you can also do is if you come in, you can say something like, if you've watched this video because of a cold email I sent you, then reply back to my email and let's set up a time to chat. You could test each of those CTAs and put them over here. But yeah, so that's pretty much the process to building a video sales letter. I can't stress the importance of building a good video sales letter. This is what allowed me to personally scale so quickly because when I was first sending cold emails and not getting any any results, it was because I didn't have a VSL. I thought it was just the words I used, which is cannot be further from the truth. And most people don't really teach this either because people don't understand how it works. And that's kind of the reason why I was able to get cold emails to work so effectively for me. But that's basically the video. I hope you learned a lot. Please implement this into your own sales process and drop, you know, let me know. Let me know how it works, right? Because I guarantee that this will work for you if you do it correctly, but let me know. Thanks for watching.